is the ultimate gamble by Microsoft purchasing Activision Blizzard King paying off for itself now and well, possibly, but at a certain cost. And a recent article released by IGN talks about how Call of Duty Black Ops 6 b- could boost Game Pass up to 4 million subscribers, but at the cost of 6 million lost sales. Analyst predicts. If you guys like this type of informational videos, make sure to like and subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Let's dive right into it to get all those details. So in an interview with GameIndustry.biz, analyst predicts that Black Ops 6 could boost Game Pass subscriber numbers by between 2.5 million and 4 million subscribers. That's huge, right? Because the hardest thing about getting people involved with your ecosystem is just to get their foot into the door. And what other game could do it any better than Call of Duty? And so far, I've been playing it myself. I'm about like two thirds way through the campaign right now. And so far, I'm really enjoying it. It's been getting a lot of great reviews as well with this game. And I mean, Call of Duty, even though people would like to trash on this game as much as they want to because of it being such a popular game. But the thing is like this game always hits like top selling games of the year. So the thing is that we can really get a chance to see how effective games pass is when it comes to this kind of uh, game of Call of Duty because we've had such a long history of showcasing the engagement of the player base, how many, how much money they make off of the game as well, and how many game units are sold. This is reported every year in public uh, hearings by Activision, so we can actually look in the past and see like how Game Pass has actually affected the sales of this, because that's always been a huge thing about like, especially from even fellow CEOs of these game publishers. With former PlayStation CEO Jim Ryan saying that he viewed Game Pass as value destructive and that Microsoft is losing money on it. But then we also see other publishers like Ubisoft doing their own Ubisoft Plus subscription where you can just play any of the Ubisoft games for a flat fee. And you would think with Game Pass subscribers boosted up 2.5 to 4 million additional subscribers would be a massive bonus, right? Microsoft has huge plans for Game Pass to be owned by hundreds of millions of people. Right now, it's not exactly doing that great, or at least as well as expected, and it's missed some type of some of the various uh, things that they wanted to hit when it comes to it. Uh, specifically mentioned here that the number is currently sitting around 34 million people playing the game or playing subscribers with Game Pass. And they've recently removed the $1 introductory fee as well, or at least the trial era thing, which I thought was a kind of an odd choice right around this time as well. But, you know, Microsoft is trying to eke out as much money as possible. Yeah, you think 34 million would be an awesome number, but it's not quite exactly the metrics that Microsoft was hoping for. And also with this side information here, with these many people going into Game Pass, it's going to hurt sales. And they mentioned that here in this article saying uh, from the uh, boss of a game biz right here, saying that putting Xbox Black Ops 6 into Game Pass could result in up to 6 million lost sales based on a idea that 25% of Game Pass subscribers might have bought the game anyways. The big thing to take in consideration though is that the fact that you're getting these people into Game Pass is the biggest thing because once you get the people's foot into the door to get into a service like that, they might just continue subscribing and playing or just completely forget. I would think at least like 10% of the new subscribers would just be like, oh yeah, that's right. I'm subscribed to Game Pass and I'm paying, you know, 15 to 20 bucks a month to play it, which would be kind of crazy to think. But that's what the power of Call of Duty has to offer for Xbox now that it's officially an Xbox titled game now. So it's going to be really interesting to see like how this all plays out. Uh, But, you know, it's also great to see that it's starting off with a good Call of Duty game as well. This has had some pretty good reception by the community at large, as well as major reviewers when it comes to how good this Call of Duty game is. Some people have been cited that it's the most content complete Call of Duty game that has come to be released in many years, which IGN, we, you can take the score what it is. They gave the campaign a nine, which is an excellent score. And on Metacritic, it seems to line up as well when it comes to all the major critic reviews of a game. You, know, you can follow the user scores however you like, but right around 85 seems to be a pretty good average. I've been seeing this number go up actually as the days have gone on. So this could be pushing high 80s, even up into the 90s when it comes to the quality 
of a Call of Duty game, which is great to see for the first go around. I mean, if it was Modern Warfare 3 being the first uh, re- major release for Game Pass, it would be a, a little bit of a different story. And player reception of this has been really good. Like you can see the engagement numbers are up there with uh, Okami posted this up saying, that Call of Duty Black Ops 6 peaks at 306,000 plus concurrent players on Steam alone during the launch weekend. So this is the highest player count in two years since the initial relaunch on Steam in 2022. Again, this isn't the be all end all numbers. Any Halo fan can tell you that, but um, it's important to see like what the trend is when it comes to the game releases. Because if you look at Steam charts here, you can kind of get the idea of what the trend has been for the Call of Duty launcher and how people have been engaging with it. Let me take up my webcam so I can show you what I'm talking about. So for the last 30 days, we've seen a pretty significant increase when it comes to player counts, right? Peak concurrent doubling what it was up back in September, right? And if you say we go back into, as I believe, November, October of last year, right? This is where Modern Warfare 3's release was. And you can see that the numbers are just not as high as they were previously. So it's really important to take that into consideration. Also down here, this was the release of Modern Warfare 2 2022 back in November. Pretty high player count. Again, like being re-released on Steam, you'll probably see a really high re-engagement number just because like, oh my God, the game's back on Steam. But you know, a lot of the people within the Call of Duty community did not really enjoy Modern Warfare 2 2022. Um, citing various reasons why uh, but also when it comes to just general sales like kind of getting back into the sales side of thing but also kind of seeing how player engagement has been when it comes to call of duty saying that no surprise that call of duty black ops 6 is the number one paid game on the xbox store as well so even though uh, game pass subscriptions have gone up people are still buying this game on xbox as well by itself so there might be some cannibalism when it comes to overall sales, as we talked about earlier, but people are still buying this game a lot on the console platform as well. So very important to keep that in mind when it comes to the most popular games on the console. What are people playing? How are they engaging with it? And so far, it's been pretty stellar for Xbox. And so far, my personal experience with Black Ops 6, even though I've been focusing just playing through the campaign right now, I've been hearing great things about the zombies experience and that people are genuinely enjoying the multiplayer. I know the biggest gripe that people have been talking about with multiplayer is skill-based matchmaking or engagement-based matchmaking, however you want to phrase it. But uh, that's not changing anytime soon. But the big thing is like what they're doing with the campaign as a campaign for Modern Warfare 3 was such a flop. But that's just because they had such little time to actually make the game. This Black Ops 6 is like the first Call of Duty game that's actually had like a true full development cycle since I believe like Cold War and maybe Modern Warfare 2019. And it's really starting to show it's actually getting a lot of great reviews. People are really enjoying this game, myself included. I'm going to be actually probably sticking with this one, keeping it in the normal rotation. I'm actually going to be a little bit of a zombie boy this time around as well when it comes to Call of Duty. And if you guys want to see some more Call of Duty content on the channel, please let me know. So it's the ultimate gamble by Microsoft putting Call of Duty on Game Pass paying off. It seems in the short term, yes, we've seen boost in numbers and still a top selling game, but will it last for a while? What was, what's the long term effect of Call of Duty being on Game Pass? Which is the way and see. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you guys miss any content from me, make sure to check out those videos right here. Leave a like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.